फोर उद्योग साधन को बाटल वेस्ट एस एंड पब्लिकेशन वग्रगण्यु फैकल्टी चे नूत वरवड़ू हंड्रेड पर्सेंट आईन क्लास मरे प्रत्येक अंदर की अदाट अति तक धर के अंदेक संस्था अवकाशा सद्विनियोगपरचे वूगल प्ले स्टोर एस एंड पब्लिकेषन ऐपनी पूर्ति विवरान संप्रदल उद्योग साधन Hello everyone. Welcome back to SNS Publications Online English Classes. In today's class, we are going to discuss the poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad by Sarojini Naidu. So, as you can see in this picture, she is Mrs. Sarojini Naidu, and the poem name is "In the Bazaars of Hyderabad." Let's get into the poem. And before we start uh, discussing the poem, so let's know about the poet, Mrs. Sarojini Naidu. Sarojini Naidu or Sarojini Chattopadhyay born in February 13 1879 Hyderabad died March 2nd 1949 Lucknow she is a political activist a feminist poet and the first indian woman to be president of the indian national congress and to be appointed an indian state governor Naidu's literary work as a poet earned her the nightingale of india or bharat ko kila by mahatma gandhi because of color imagery and lyrical quality of her poetry so as you can see or you might have read about the screen as you can see actually her name is sarojini naidu and she was born and brought up in hyderabad but she is actually their parents are from lucknow so she is uh, died in lucknow 1940 Nine. She is a political activist, a feminist, a person who supports the feminism, and the poet, and also a political leader. She was the first uh, Indian woman to be the president of Indian National Congress, and she was uh, called a uh, Nightingale of India or Bharat Ko Kila by our father of our nation, Mahatma Gandhi. Why did she get the title? Because of the color, imagery, and the lyrical quality of her poem. Imagery is nothing but the visual description. when we read any of her writings you can imagine and you can visually feel what exactly happening let's read the poem you will understand what is the quality of her poetry all right let's get into the next slide so here let's know about the poem so we understood about the poet now let's know about the poem what is this uh, uh, poem is all about in the bazaars of hyderabad by the title itself you can understand so it's all about hyderabad and the bazaars of hyderabad what is there in the bazaars of hyderabad why mrs sarojini naidu has written a poem about bazaars of hyderabad let's see the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad is a brilliant piece of writing by the indian women poet sarojini naidu and as for the context the poem was written as a part of swadeshi movement during that freedom movement the indians decided to boycott european merchandise and use the indian products instead through the poem in the bazaars of hyderabad sarojini naidu wanted to convey the message that india is rich in tradition and they don't need the foreign products my dear people so through this passage through this paragraph you might have understood what is this poem is all about why did she write so we knew about mrs sarojini naidu she was not only a writer she was also a freedom fighter she is a political leader and she is a feminist right so here the context or the theme of the poem is it was written as a part of the swadeshi movement what was this swadeshi movement is all about actually it all happened pre independence time we indians are not allowed to buy our own products we were forced to buy european products because we were under britishers rule right so we were we all were forced to buy those european products not our own indian products and uh, um, to tell you one more point at that time in those days even newspaper publication was also banned because through newspapers only people will come to know what exactly happening so they did not allow any group gatherings or they banned the newspaper publications and they forced us the forced indians to buy the european products so as a writer or as a political leader so what did she decide she wanted to convey people 
she wanted to convey a message to people to buy our Indian products. So that is how she has written the poem. Through this poem, the bazaars of Hyderabad, Sarojini Naidu wanted to convey the message. What was the message is all about? That India is rich in tradition. India is rich in tradition. Do you all, like, uh, do you all accept? I do accept. So India is rich in tradition and they don't need the foreign products at all. And as we are rich in our own traditions and we have our quality products and why should we buy the products? This, through this poem, she conveyed that message to people because at, in those days, I repeat this point again, newspapers publication was also banned by the Britishers and we all were forced to buy the European products, not our Indian products. So as a writer, as a freedom fighter and as a political leader, she conveyed that message through this poem in the bazaars of Hyderabad and we already understood she is actually basically from born and brought up in Hyderabad. So she knew the Hyderabad bazaars very well. So what did she write in her poem? Let's see. Let's get into the poem. Uh, my dear people, the poem is all about five stanzas and each stanza consists of six lines and it is all in the form of questioning and answering session. The po poet goes to merchants, vendors, peddlers and in the market, she roams around the market and she asks the merchants what are they selling and she and the merchants or the vendors they reply what they are selling let's see the passage now and first stanza one what do you sell o a merchants richly your wares are displayed turbans of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade mirrors with panels of amber daggers with handles of jade i would like to read uh, once again what do you sell O A merchants, here O A merchants means O A here you in old English Y E means you. What do you sell O A merchants? Who is asking this? Sarojini Naidu asking merchants. Merchants mean traders. Richly your wares are displayed. What are the wares here? The articles those are offered for sale. Displayed means presented or exhibited. So she was asking merchants, what do you sell O A merchants? A means oh you merchant she was asking merchants richly your wares are displayed turbans of crimson and silver what do you mean by turban my dear people here as you can see a man's head covered with uh, uh, you know large material this is what the turbans of crimson crimson means it's a deep uh, rich red color and silver this is what the turban of crimson and silver tunics of purple brocade what do you mean by tunics Tunics, it's a loose garment, loose garment uh, typically without sleeves and which uh, reaches to the knees part. So that, those are called tunics. In older days, people used to wear those tunics as you can see, but without sleeves of purple brocade. Brocade is nothing but a rich fabric. Mirrors with panels of amber. Panel is nothing but a rectangular uh, kind of component. Amber is a dark yellowish substance we generally used for making furniture it's a resin kind of thing amber daggers with handles of jade daggers means these are daggers a short uh, knife with a sharper edge handles of jade jade means precious green color stone so the dagger short knives so the and handles of jade jade means a green color stone and I have uh, taken some pictures to give you more clarity these are the turbans tunics and daggers and and the mirrors what do you sell in first stanza one she was asking merchants what do you sell O oh, your yeah, merchants richly your wares are displayed turbans of crimson and silver and here in these two lines uh, Mrs. Sarojini Naidu was asking them and they replied turbans of crimson and silver Tunics of purple brocade, mirrors with panels of amber, daggers with handles of J. So here the explanation. In the first stanza, the poet meets some merchants, seeing their goods which are richly displayed, ask them what they are selling. The merchants replies, they are selling deep red and silver colored turbans, purple garments with silver and gold. Threading mirrors with amber. A Prussian resin used for decoration and also knives whose handles are made up of green stone. A precious, valuable green color stone. So this is all about stanza 1. Hope it is very clear. Let's move on to the next stanza. In stanza 2, she went to vendors 
and asking them, what do you weigh? O A vendors, saffron, lentil and rice. What do you grind? O A maidens, sandalwood, henna and spice. What do you call? O A peddlers, chessmen and ivory dice. In stanza 2, initially she went to merchants and she asked them what are richly displayed over there and merchants replied and here she went to vendors, she went to maidens, she went to call peddlers and what are they selling? What are they selling here? Saffron and lentil and rice. Vendors means sellers. Saffron, saffron is nothing but an orange yellowish color food flavor uh, which is made up of dried flowers and lentil and rice, grains and rich in protein lentils. What do you grind? Nowadays we do have these mixes and grinders but in older days we did not have all those uh, electrical equipment. So in those days maidens means young woman. They used to put all the grains in that particular grind which is made of stones and they used to grind it. So she was asking oh yeah, maidens what do you grind? Sandalwood, henna and spice they replied. And again she went to, what do you call? Here calling means they were shouting like, they are asking, oh yeah, peddlers, peddlers is also a sellers or dealers, chessmen and ivory dice. What do you mean by chessmen? The pieces or figures which are used in chess game. And what is meant by ivory dice? When you just play that uh, kind of cube which is made up of, uh, made of ivory. Ivory is a component or a substance. Uh, which was made of this elephant tusk. So the, the, that is nothing but which is in white color, ivory dice. Okay. So in stanza 2, she was asking vendors, she was asking maidens, she was asking peddlers, what are they selling? I would like to read uh, this stanza once again. What do you weigh? Oye vendors, saffron and lentil and rice. What do you grind? Oye maidens, sandalwood, henna and spice. What do you call? Oh yeah, peddlers, chessmen and ivory dice. Here for your information I have given even the explanation also if you want to take a screenshot of it you can take it. Next the poet goes to vendors and asks them what they are weighing on the scale as you can see in the picture. They reply that saffron, pulses and rice. Next she asks the maidens what they are grinding. The maidens reply that they are grinding sandalwood and spices. She meets salesmen and asks them what they are calling. Calling means what they are selling. They reply that they are selling chessmen and ivory dice for chess game. I hope stanza 2 is clear. Let's move on to the stanza 3. Let's get into the next stanza. What do you make OA goldsmiths? Wristlet and anklet and ring. Bells for the feet of blue pigeons. Frail as a dragon flies wing. Girdles of gold for dancers, scabbards of gold for the king. So while reading this stanza, you might have understood. Mr. Sarojini Naidu next went to goldsmith. Who is goldsmith? A person who makes the gold ornaments. And she was asking the goldsmith, what were they making? A wristlet. A wristlet is nothing but a bracelet, anklet, uh, an ornament worn around the ankle and ring. Bells for the feet of the blue pigeon. Pigeon is a bird. So. So are they making a bells, very delicate bells as dragonflies wing, frail means delicate. So as a dragonfly, so here is the comparison between the bells uh, for the feet of blue pigeon with dragonflies wings. Have you seen the dragonflies wings? Very delicate, frail, right? Girdles of gold for dancers, girdle is nothing but a, a belt or a cord around uh, waist. Dancers generally they do wear these belts. Scabbards of gold for the king. What do you mean by scabbards? Scabbard is nothing but a holder or a cover for sword. Generally kings they just they keep their swords right directly they don't keep they just cover it. So that cover is made of gold. So scabbard is nothing but a holder or a cover. Now she went to goldsmith and asking wristlet what do you make? Oh yeah goldsmith wristlet and anklet and ring. Bells for the feet of blue pigeons. Frail as a dragonfly's wing. How the bells, uh, how are they made? As frail as a dragonfly's wing. Girdles of gold for dancers. Girdle is nothing but a belt. Scabbards of gold for the king. Scabbard is nothing but a cover or a holder for the sword. Let's see the explanation. Now the poet meets goldsmiths and asks them what they are making. They reply that they are making ornaments for wrists and ankles and also rings. 
They continue saying that they are making bells for the feet of blue pigeons. These bells are as delicate as the wing of a dragonfly. They are also making belts for, of God for the dancers, swords and daggers made up of gold for the kings. These lines depict how rich the Indians are. If you can notice the scabbards of gold, girdles and the bells for the blue pigeons. So all these things depict, depicts means represent how rich Indians are. So this is all about stanza 3. Let's move on to the next stanza. Next, uh, Mrs. Sarojini Naidu went to fruit men so, and asking what they are selling. What do you cry, O A fruit men? Citron, pomegranate and plum. What do you play, O A musicians? Sitar, sarangi and drum. What do you chant, O musicians? Spells for ions to so here in this stanza, if you can notice, she went to fruit men, she went to musicians, she went to musicians also and she was asking what they are selling and what they are doing. So firstly, they were answering like citron, pomegranate and plum. Citron is nothing but a citrus fruit as you can see there and the plum is a fleshy uh, fruit which is in purple color and pomegranate. What do you play? And then she went to musician and asking what do you play? What do you play, O oh, musicians? Sitar, Sarangi and Drum. These are the Indian musical instruments. Sitar, Sarangi and Drums. These are the basically Indian musical instruments. What do you chant? And also she went to musicians and she was asking spells for the aeons to come. Are they spells? Spells means calling some names rhythmatically. Aeons. Aeons mean very long period of time. Are they calling uh, the people from long period of time to come? So this is what she is asking. Let's read the uh, meaning. Next she meets vendors selling fruits and asks them what they are selling. Here cry means it's not crying. Generally fruit men they shout what they are selling. Right. So that means cry. Next she meets vendors selling fruits and asks them what they are selling. They reply that they are selling citron, pomegranate and plum. Now she meets musicians and asks them what they are playing. They reply sitar, sarangi and drum. Next she asks musicians what they are chanting. They reply that they are chanting magic spells for aeons. Here aeons supreme deity and actual meaning is very longer period of time which is indefinite. It is not like 100 years back or 1000 years back. Very long period of time. So to help them show their magic tricks. Alright. Hope the stanza explanation is clear. Let us move on to the next stanza. What do you weave O oh, a flower girls? with tassels of azure and red, crown for the brow of a bridegroom, chaplets to garland his bed, sheets of white blossoms, new garnered to perfume the sleep of the dead. So by reading this stanza you might have understood. So she went to flower girls who sells flowers with tassels of azure and red. What do you mean by tassels here? Tassels are nothing but a hanging threads of azure. Azure means bright blue color, bright blue color and red. Crown for the brow of a bridegroom. Brow is a forehead, forehead of a bridegroom. Just are they making crowns, flower crowns for the bridegroom or chaplets? Chaplets are nothing but flowers of which is in circle form to garland his bed. Whose bed? Bridegroom's bed. And sheets of white blossoms, new garner, to perfume the sleep of the dead. White blossoms means mass of flowers. Mass of flowers. New garden means very fresh. Fresh flowers. For what? To perfume the sleep of the dead. So as you know, we generally throw some flowers and we decorate even our dead bodies also to convey our grief. Right? So here if you see, this is the happiest moment and this is the sad moment. But we use these flowers in both occasions right so this is what she was conveying finally she reaches flower girls and asking them what they are weaving with bright blue and red threads they reply that they are weaving crown for the brow of a bridegroom and flowers to decorate his bedroom they are also making new sheets full of white colored flowers to fill a dead person's grave with fragrance thus they are making everything from one's joy to grief one is a, a happy situation and one is a very sad situation. So she was, they were explaining 
they were explaining everything they are making from one's joy to grief. I hope the explanation is clear. Let us move on to the next part. So, here these are the five stanzas. Let us repeat once again, revise once again. What did we? In stanza 1, she went to merchants. OA means you. In old English, it is you. She was asking merchants, richly your wares are displayed. Wares means articles that are present over there. Displayed means exhibited. Turbans of crimson and silver, tunics of purple brocade, mirrors with panels of amber, daggers with handles of jade. Jade is nothing but a green precious stone. In the first stanza, she went to merchants and she was asking and the merchants replied her, this is what they were selling. And the second stanza, she went to peddlers and vendors and maidens and she asked, what are they selling? What are they grinding? What are they calling? All right. And the next stanza, she went to goldsmiths and she was asking, what are they making? And they replied that wristlet, anklet and ring and also bells for the feet of blue pigeons. And how the uh, bells are compared with as delicate, as frail as dragonflies wing and also girdles for the dancers and the scabbards for the king. And in the next stanza, she went to fruitmen, she went to musicians, she went to musicians as well and she asked and she wanted to convey like how rich the Indian country, the country is. And next she went to flower girls and she asked what are they making and they replied that they are making crowns for the brow of a bridegroom and also to perfume sleep of the dead. I hope the explanation is clear and let us move on to the next part, the rhyming scheme, the rhyming words and the poetic devices used in this poem. It is very very important, it is not only to understand the poem, it is very important to know about the poet and the rhyming scheme and the words and the poetic devices and the message or the theme of the poem. Now it is part of rhyming scheme. The poem is divided into five stanzas, six lines each and the rhyme scheme is A, B, C, B, C, B. She uses the question and answer technique between the poet and the merchants, the thing that makes readers visualize the picture of the bazaar where the traditional Indian products are overwhelming. So here the rhyming scheme is A, B, C, B, C, B. I would like to show you how to just know the rhyming scheme. Let us see. Let us take the stanza 1. For example, what do you sell O A merchants? Let us consider this one is A. Richly your wares are displayed. Is it like rhyming with the line 1? No. So let us take this one is B. Turbans of crimson and silver. Is it rhyming with the first two lines? No. So let us take this one C. Tunics of purple brocade. Tunics of purple brocade, displayed and brocade. Don't you think they are uh, rhyming each other? So this one is again B, displayed and brocade. So B, A, B, C, B. Mirrors with panels of amber. So don't you think so this amber and silver rhyming with each other? So now it's C. Again, daggers with handles of jade. Don't you think this jade brocade and displayed rhyming with each other. So this is B. So the rhyming scheme is A, B, C, B, C, B. This is how you need to take the rhyming scheme. I hope it is clear. So the rhyming scheme is A, B, C, B, C, B. And this is the questioning and answering session. Like the poet asked the merchants, vendors, peddlers and she was getting answers from them. So what they are selling, what they are making. So this is what. And you can visualize, you can visualize while reading the poem what exactly the actual richness of Hyderabad bazaars. Now the rhyming words. The poet has used vibrant rhymes to describe the magnificence of the bazaars and the products sold. It also adds life to her descriptions. Examples of the rhyming words. I hope you might have found the rhyming words as well, but I would like to uh, just tell you brocade, jade, rice, spice, dice, ring, wing, king. Red, bed, dead and many more. If you notice, there are many more rhyming words you can find in the poem. These are the rhyming words. This is the rhyming scheme. And what is the poetic device is used is simile. What is the simile? Simile is a figure of speech in which two dissimilar objects are compared 
and the comparison is made clear by the use of term like such as and when you use such as or like dissimilar objects not the similar objects dissimilar objects where did you find that similarity dissimilar objects like here in the bazaars of Hyderabad frail as a dragonfly's wing is a fine example of simile. So, do you remember so here the bells are compared with dragonflies wings bells for the feet of blue pigeons frail as a dragonflies wing as delicate as it. So, the poetic device here is used is simile. So, I, I hope the rhyming scheme and the rhyming words and the poetic device is also clear and let's uh, move on to the next slide conclusion or the message of the bazaars of Hyderabad as you can see in the picture India is rich in tradition and they don't need the foreign products and I do believe that one must know that this poem was written during the freedom struggle of India so Sarojini Naidu has been trying to unite the Indians to drive the British out of India she is trying to encourage the Indians to buy goods from their traditional bazaar rather than purchasing foreign products. This is what the actual conclusion as you understand this poem and the message what she wanted to convey as a writer, as a poet, as a freedom fighter, as a political leader, as a feminist. She wanted to convey message to people during that Swadeshi moment when we people like we were forced to buy European products and this is how she conveyed message to the people when newspapers were banned by the Britishers not to reach any kind of message to our people Indians so this is how she conveyed how beautifully she conveyed uh, the message to the people to buy only Indian products she also explained through this poem how rich our country is through you know a bazaar of Hyderabad as she was brought and brought up I thoroughly enjoyed reading out the poem and explaining to you I hope the explanation is clear to you and whatever the question comes from this poem you will be able to answer and about the poet or about the poetic devices or the rhyming scheme or the poem so you will be able to answer and any doubts please let me know thank you very much Group 4 Ujjogum Me Lakshima लक्ष्य साधन को बाटल वेस्तु एस एंड एस पब्लिकेशन स्वारु अगर गंजुले ने फैकल्टी लची नोटन वार बढ़ितु 100 परसेंट ऑनलाइन क्लास लेतो पाटुगा मरे नो प्रचेक तलतो अंदर की अंधु पाटलो अतिता को धर के अंदिस्तुने ये कई का समस्ता ये अवकाश नी सद्विनियोग पर चुको वालंटी वेंट ने गूगल प्ले स्टोर नोडी एस एंड एस पब्लिकेशंस